Hi, I'm Dr. Duncan Petley. I'm an associate professor of entrepreneurship at McMurray University, and I'm co-authoring this paper with Dr. David Boji, uh, professor emeritus at New Mexico State University and the University of Aalborg. And so David and I had a really cool idea for this paper. We call this Return to Tomorrowland, Metaphors of Marquis de Sada, Mary Parker Fallot on a Yellow Brick Road. Before I tell you a little bit about the paper over the next 15 minutes, let me give you a roadmap of the things that we'll be discussing. We'll transition into the methodology on the next slide. And then we will talk about uh, Marquis de Sade and his concept of power over, and then Mary Parker Fall and her concept of power with. Then we will use uh, Frank Baum's um, The Wonderful uh, World of Oz to serve as kind of a testing ground for this conversation between de Sade and Mary Parker Fallot. Then we'll talk about implications and discussion. So the methodology. One of David's most famous papers is uh, written about uh, the, D the Disney company, and it uses this play called Tomorrowland as a way to explore some of the organizational dysfunctions at Disney. Now, the Tomorrowland play is very interesting. It's very different from probably any other play you've ever seen because it's an interactive play. It is literally, as the caption indicates here, a story that you follow from room to room. So in other words, the audience members go to the location of the play and they walk through the rooms as they try to piece together what's actually going in Tomorrowland. Now, the setting of Tomorrowland takes place in fascist Italy, and it's looking at an individual that is considered a threat to Mussolini. So Mussolini places him under house arrest, and the different characters in the play Tomorrowland um, alternate between people who are loyal to Mussolini and people who are loyal to other members of the house. And quite frankly, there's a degree of hedonism that's going on uh, throughout the play. And so... We really like the Tomorrowland metaphor as a methodology because it enables you to transition. It uses a kind of a literary lens to explore power relations, systems dynamics, and you can kind of wander from room to room, or as we're doing in this particular paper, using the vignettes of um, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz with some theoretical abstractions to explore relationships in a way that really I think only literature can do. So let me tell you just a little bit about Marquis de Sade also. His, birth, his born name was Donatien Alphonse Francois. Now, many of you are familiar with this philosophy because you've heard of the term sadism. But we're not really talking about sadism or sadomasochism as it's described in the normal pop culture sense. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to look at sadism from the perspective of Marquis de Sade's original writings. So sadism is a coherent ethic system, but it's very different than the ethic systems that most of us are familiar with. It is a system that is anti-liberal, anti-humanist, anti-democratic, and anti-women. It is an ethic system that relishes in the contempt for human dignity. And Desaad was really good at building systems. That was kind of his thing. He liked to build games. He would build systems in such a way that victims would have to acquiesce to his demands. They may not want to, but they were always kind of powerless. They had to do what the uh, what Desaad wanted. So that is sadism in a nutshell. So we wondered, well, Desaad obviously never had a conversation with this lady on our next slide, Mary Parker Fallot, but we wondered what one of those conversations would look like. And let me tell you a little bit about who Mary Parker Fallot is. Mary Parker Fallot is known as the mother of modern management. Um, and yes, this is a picture of her. Uh, most of the pictures you've seen on the internet depict a much older Mary Parker Fallot. This is what she looked like when she was graduating from Radcliffe College. And so Mary Parker Follett is known as also the mother of systems theory, but I would argue that instead what she did is she explored how individuals could harness, in lieu of Marquis de Sade's power over, where an individual uses power to exploit others, she looked at power with systems. In other words, how people can work together to create one plus one equals three kinds of arrangements. So she was a real expert at destroying you know, outdated or archaic systems and introducing new systems uh, into play. So that's power over and power with at the world of Oz. Now, most of you are familiar with the movie, um, but we actually went and reread Frank Baum's original novel. And there was a lot of really interesting things that we looked at. Uh, from a perspective of kind of the theories of Marquis de Sade and Mary Parker Fall kind of dancing. 
And so the world of Oz itself is a system. And it is mostly a system that Marquis de Sade would favor. It is very much a power over system. Um, and it's just quite interesting. You know, you've got people who are scared of the witches. You've got people who are scared of Oz. And more importantly, the system of Oz was able to dictate to the characters in the novel how they saw themselves. So let me give an example. The straw man was told that he had no brains. They were, he was told that he was stupid. Um, the tin wood man was told that he had no heart. They told him he couldn't feel anything. The lion was told he had no courage. That they told him that he was basically a big scary cat. And so what winds up becoming interesting is this little girl, Dorothy, comes into play, and she's not really impacted by the system. And as the different characters march along the Yellow Brick Road, first of all, Dorothy's a master storyteller. She's very much a Felician power with integration style storytelling because what she does is she listens to what the different characters would like out of Oz and she explains that they have a common goal and what if they all work together to achieve this, okay? She didn't threaten them, she didn't manipulate them, she, she didn't do any of those things that Marquis de Sade would have done, but she told, she listened to their stories and then regurgitated those stories to them in a way that they could relate to for their own ways and own reasons. So they create kind of this power with bubble that, you, that they use to march along the Yellow Brick Road. And some interesting things happen. First of all, um, Dorothy in many ways brought out the best in these characters. You know, it turns out actually the straw man was very capable of doing all sorts of things that required a higher level thought. The Tin Wood Man actually was a very emotional uh, character and cried. And the lion had great courage when it came to protecting Dorothy. Um, so she was able to show that, you know, these conceptions that the Wizard of Oz told them you know, were true, were actually very false. And as they worked together across the Yellow Brick Road, they destroyed multiple systems in the world of Oz, right? I mean, they melted the Wicked Witch of the West. Um, they destroyed Oz's power of illusion to the point that he went to Nebraska. Um, so she was able to really destroy these things. She was able to break the stereotypes. Now, I realize this is a very unusual kind of paper in, uh, with regards to management studies. This is using literary techniques and literary analysis to look at concepts in management. And yes, I can see one of the potential critiques is the fact that, well, actually, The Wizard of Oz is a fairy tale. How does this relate to real life? But again, you can think about that. We all live in these kinds of systems. Some of us do live in Oz-type systems where we're told what we can and can't be, what we can and can't think, what we should and should not do. But it's interesting how somebody who appears as powerless as this little girl, but through a good story can harness the power of others, can actually create this alternative system, this power with system, and can in turn collapse uh, kind of the larger macroeconomic system. And I can see this as being relevant to both businesses, uh, to businesses, governments, and societies. But my question for all of you is, I know this is a very unusual way of writing and exploring management concepts. And so I definitely welcome your uh, questions, comments, and feedback. And furthermore, I uh, would find it invaluable to receive some guidance from you um, as to additional references that use similar techniques that we can use to kind of beef up our bibliography because this is a work in progress. And I'd also be interested in hearing your feedback about which kinds of journals you think would be open to publishing something like this. Uh, thank you, and I'm looking forward to your comments.